Welcome to round four of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of January 10th. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. And Nicole Eridix. Hi there. As moms of teens and young adults, we survived those little kid days, yet we're still rethinking the decisions we made all through our kids' lives and worrying about what's going on right now. Today's Thursday, which means it's time to give in to our obsessing. And today we're obsessing about a list of little life improvements published in the Guardian newspaper. Um, These are pretty random since, you know, that's what happens when someone has to come up with a list of 100 things. (laughs) Um, And some of them are very British, like join a litter picking group. (laughs) Um, But we thought we would just all take a look at this list and pick one to share that we think is actually a good idea or that maybe we plan to do or already do and one that is just silly (laughs) so shall I go first go ahead okay Uh, I'm gonna pick pick the same ones yeah (laughs) I'm gonna pick two that are back to back number 14 buy a cheap blender and use it to finely chop onions it saves on time and tears (laughs) like Okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, does it save money to buy a blender when you could buy pre-chopped onions? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is what I was going to say. You know what really saves time? Right. Just buy it pre-chopped, which is what my husband Mm -hmm. does. Um, (laughs) But also, does it have to be a cheap blender? Can you get yourself (laughs) a nice blender? Well, I think because it has to be dedicated to onions. Oh, this is the dedicated onion blender? This is the onion Mm. blender. Nobody touch it. Nobody put your smoothies in there Mm. because you don't want a blueberry onion smoothie. This is for those with (laughs) unlimited counter space. Okay, we have the good, the smoothie blender. We have the onion blender. Right. Mm -hmm. And never confuse the two (laughs) by... They have custom nameplates. So we know. (laughs) They share a plug so you could never get confused. Oh my. It's like if you have it, it's like having a um, very strictly kosher kitchen where you have to have like two of everything. Mm -hmm. That's, that's way too much work. Yes. Just Mm -hmm. buy the (laughs) pre-chopped onions or absolutely learn how to rinse the onion under cold water and then chop it. And it's fine. So that is one of the best scenes in the movie, Julie and Julia, oh, when Julie Meryl Streep as Julia Child is chopping onions and not <laughs> because she's, you know, learning uh-huh. French cooking technique and, and knife skills, professional yeah. knife skills. And she just <laughs> mm-hmm. has a mountain of onions because <laughs> she's <laughs> chopping. <laughs> she was not going to use a blender. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm-mm. also movie, you will way. end up with like onion slurry not yes. like finely chopped little p- individual pieces of onions yes. so. isn't there like a a lower rent device for chopping onions that does not mm-hmm. involve electricity that's just yeah like but it thing? doesn't chop them it's there it's uneven i have one okay. of those. Yeah. well i don't want uneven onions in my <laughs> Well, I mean, uneven in the sense that you have like small bits and then these oh. huge, like half an onion bit. <laughs> like, what the heck? That, that is possibly too uneven. Yes, I will agree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's one I'm not going to follow. Right. Um, but the following one I think is a good, is a good tip, which is keep your children's drawings and paintings and put Aww. the best ones in frames. And mm-hmm. I do love, um, kids artwork even if it's Mm -hmm. not my own kids I love I love seeing kids artwork and and like a couple of months ago I don't remember exactly when but I had um a Facebook memory pop up that was a drawing of that one of my kids had done that I posted on Facebook and it was so fun when it came back as a memory because it was all about like the caption, you know, because it yeah. was a family, mm-hmm. it was a family portrait that one of my kids had drawn that included that child, the sibling, the dad, <laughs> the, the dog, and a stinky sock. Oh. And then was was I in the picture? 
no, there was no room. I'm afraid for mom in the picture. <laughs> you were represented by the stinky, stinky sock. sock. <laughs> oh, Perhaps that was that. a picture of the members of the family whose socks stink, and that's why you weren't in it. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good way to look at. It. <laughs> See if your kid knew. So yeah, that's however, what the dog say. was in it. The dog who does not wear if the dog wore socks, socks. They would be stinky, though. <laughs> yes, absolutely, that is true. That that's is true. that's a great idea. Actually, I think even more than like putting it on the refrigerator. Because sure, do that, but take a picture of all your kids' artwork and post yeah. it on social media so that it will periodically pop up in your mm-hmm. feed and make you happy. Right. I personally keep all my children's artwork in boxes under my bed. <laughs> right. And we we have those too. Um, <laughs> but it is fun to take them all out and take pictures of them and then dispose of them kindly in a yes, quietly and in a loving way and stealthily. <laughs> <laughs> Amazed my husband hasn't done that yet. Maybe he has already. Maybe he has. Have you my child did this? I can't possibly throw it out. <laughs> I don't think he knows so, under, that's why they're under the bed. If they were under so foot, what they would, would be gone. What would you pick from this list, Terry, of something that you would actually well, do and something that you think is just I'll start with the thing that I would possibly do and in fact do do, and this is a good reminder of it. If possible, take the stairs. Such an easy Mm -hmm. little semi-fitness item. Partly something I do because I don't like elevators very much. Ah. So if it's just going to be a floor or two, I don't need to get in that little scary moving box for that. I can do that. (laughs) So, I mean, I'm not going to do 20 stories, but I'll do two or three. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I always feel very proud of myself and very smug when I do it. And uh, Mm -hmm. I shall, it's a good reminder to continue doing that. It's also good if you work in a building that's like two or three stories high and somebody at work ticks you off and you can't say anything, but you need to burn off that rage (laughs) up and down the stairs a few times and maybe around the parking lot a time or two. That's the trick less good, likely to commit homicide. And uh, the one that I think is is a little ridiculous, although I do embrace part of it, is connect with nature. Stand outside barefoot for a few minutes, even when it's cold. <laughs> now, I have recently been hearing a lot about the value of vitamin D, both for my bones and maybe for COVID. And just because, you know, being outside your house every now and then for a while is a good thing. So I've been trying to, if I have a few minutes empty in my work schedule, just go outside and position myself directly in the sun for a few minutes with a cup of tea, maybe. And I really like it. It's really peaceful and calming and makes me feel good and just gives me a little bit of fresh air there in my backyard where nobody can be contaminated by whatever I'm breathing out. Just feels good to do. But barefoot? In the cold? (laughs) What the heck? Honestly, why? Oh, why? Also, have you seen how dirty my patio is? No, the grass would, I would be more likely to stand barefoot in the grass than on my patio, honestly. Uh, You know, and even the grass, a lot of animals in our backyard don't really want to step on anything, either an animal byproduct or an actual animal in my bare feet. So no, thank you very much. I will be wearing shoes, but I will be standing out in nature because nature's nice. Nature's pretty. I got a couple of minutes. I'm going to go say hi to nature. Come back in, sit in my computer for the rest of the day. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah, there's there's several inches of snow in my yard right now. So I'm definitely not going out there. So how did you get a pneumonia, ma'am? Well, I saw this article and it said to stand outside barefoot, even when it's cold. So I went out when it was two degrees and snowing. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cold. <laughs> Put on shoes, people. Honestly, <laughs> what's the matter with you? How about you, Nicole? What did you think of this list? Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Nicole has 10. (laughs) It was hard to choose what was ridiculous. (laughs) Like, okay, this is really a first world issue, but instead of buying a morning coffee, set up a daily transfer of money from a current bank account into a savings account not i'm not gonna stop buying could you do both 
coffee. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess if you have the yeah. coffee and then put the same amount in your bank account, but you, you, can you probably can't mess too. with. Do not mess with the morning coffee. There is no way <laughs> that that's going to be these messed with. Isolated days that you're having coffee with a friend, buy yourself a coffee, transfer the money to represent a second cup of coffee, <laughs> and then sit there and look at your and phone. Then let it sit there. Yeah. The other one was go to bed earlier, but don't take your phone with you. As <gasps> if. <laughs> <laughs> silly, like, silly do people. That? I know <laughs> but I I did like the the one that I actually try to do I'm pretty conscious about it now because I've really noticed it lately drop your shoulders mm, oh, that's a good one drop your shoulders like I, I constantly or stop clenching your teeth oh. I think about it and I'm like oh yeah and then I drop my shoulders and I realized that was a huge difference yeah, yeah. Interesting. In the way I felt. And something someone, a, a physical therapist told me once was, um, don't jut your chin out because that like oh. strains your neck too. Huh. Oh. And I was just doing that when you said that. Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> and when you notice it, then you can, yeah. then you can stop and tuck that, tuck that in. <laughs> tuck that chin in. <laughs> tuck that chin in. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that something that I try. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, that's good. But then, then you go on and there's stuff like add the milk at least one minute after the tea. Has oh, burned. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, first of all, why are you telling people that like, presumably anyone who's reading this article has been drinking tea and making their own tea for however right. many decades yeah and you're going to now tell them how to do it like <laughs> too late it's too late mm-hmm. for sure but there are lots of good ones yes yeah, there's some good one add cheese mm-hmm. which always makes yeah. things better though perhaps not your tea but not in the tea no don't put it in your tea yeah we all know what's missing from this list though right yeah definitely they a major oversight (laughs) listening to podcasts right every day get your daily fill of the parenting roundabout podcast yes Mm -hmm. Yes. where is that that was number 101 they just couldn't that's right (laughs) we're just gonna add that to the end people (laughs) absolutely (laughs) Well, that's it for today's round four. Tune in tomorrow and we'll share our roundabout roundup of things that we've been using or enjoying lately that we think deserve a shout out. Find all our episodes at parentingroundabout.com and talk back in the comments there on our Facebook page or on Twitter where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. <laughs>